good afternoon conquest of doers I think um, in the hope of building up some interest in my forthcoming novel um, the conquest of doe I've done some readings of the first five draft chapters some blogs and what have you um, and uh, I've been looking at my YouTube channel uh, my much neglected YouTube channel which um, I actually started I can see here on the screen capture uh, that I opened this channel in November the 2nd 2007 now that's a long time ago uh, certainly a long time in my life and a, a different uh, a, a different Roger really back then um, I was living on my estate just outside Bristol which was the former um, estate of Lord Raxall and before that it was um, the home of uh, a Bristolian gentleman um, who had been engaged to uh, Hannah Moore who was a famous blue stocking and Georgian novelist and poet. Um, in fact one of the things I must do is look out Hannah's poem um, about the stones bleed red which is to do with the uh, iron stone native to that part of uh, the West Country. Um, she was an early campaigner against slavery and a correspondent a correspondent with many people including William Garrick the famous uh, theatre holder the story in another life um, but uh, through uh, my YouTube channel um, there are early episodes um, sort of you know, related back then I've been in Sweden quite happily uh, since April 2010 so that's eight years um, so uh, uh, anyway, h h here's the um, analytics page on my recently, my recently, what should we say, um, my recently demonetized uh, YouTube channel. And now is there a, that comes up, uh, come, here, yep, here we go, if I go on to my, uh, yeah. There's a little notice appeared um, some time ago, which doesn't look like it wants to go already. Uh, but what it says is your channel no longer qualifies for monetization, which is quite possible in that um, it doesn't really get a lot of views. Um, although in the distribution of internet land, it gets a reasonable uh, 500,000 views over the years. Uh, are distributed um, as we shall see in a moment uh, here's the lifetime um, the distribution of the uh, just the play up it's been very very slow um, yes well you can see there was hardly any traffic up to this point here uh, this point here started taking a bit more int around to and this big spike here uh, was to do with when uh, Roger Lloyd Pack the actor in um, Only Fools and Horses died um, and that triggers me the ship of Theseus or Theseus however you say it well anyway um, that video garnered or has had uh, 218,000 views or 44 percent of all the views on this channel um, and garnered an estimated revenue of 238 dollars i've never been paid any of this this money um, uh, because i've moved to sweden i haven't had a bank account in england and to change to sweden i have to get the code which needs to be sent to one of my addresses in England and I no longer have an address in England so I, I'm in a little bit of a, a, a I have got a solution to that which I, I'm due to implement shortly um, so now I've been demonetized I, I think I was going to just try and get 
um, Alphabet stroke Google stroke YouTube to cough up the $440 that they owe me. Now, that's all by the by and of no relevance whatsoever to this video. Um, I plan to use this channel um, a little more often. Um, I am going to be taking up my guitar again this summer um, and just start playing a little. I just lost the muse completely after I wrote a song called Hecuba's Scream in memory of a dear friend of mine who took his own life. Um, and uh, after, I don't know, it must have been a year or two after Ken sadly shot himself, uh, that I wrote that song. And then that, I, I just haven't wanted to, or haven't wanted to pick up a guitar uh, since. Uh, but, you know, time moves on. It's almost two years since I recorded, I wrote and recorded that song. Um, and in the interim, I've been writing uh, my novel and spending more time writing my blog. Now, there is a point to this. It's not just an excuse not to be writing and finishing off Conquest of Doe. Um, I have here notes. I have notes. Um, and these notes are to do with uh, getting through uh, the next few few chapters. The next chapter is actually to explain the significance of the Holy Doe of Aleppo. Um, and uh, there are various uh, tabs open on my screen here, which uh, just by way of a little peek. Uh, see what else have we got here? With Devon. Um, and this is a fascinating story of the Holon. Holy Leaven in the uh, Syrian church um, and Nestorius um, and these are the bad boys of theology Nestorius, um, Arius and um, uh, Pelagius um, and these, they're wonderful characters that took their theology very very seriously and pissed off Saint Augustine and um, Cyril of Alexandria and um, uh, Constantine, the emperor of the Eastern Roman Empire, uh, all, all of this, um, all of this, runs through uh, the novel *Conquest of Doe*. And um, the interesting thing, uh, if we just go through some other even into the story, so if you aren't up on your uh, uh, even on your biblical um, histography, or theology, uh, and so forth, which let's face it, most people aren't. It's the Eastern Syrian right here, which is to do with the Holy Leaven. Um, my, which, as you can see, I mean, it's been. It, this is just the last I've visitors this past week or so. So you can see on the 24th there were 101 units, um, but it kind of, uh, you know. Um, um, if you do sort of pop in and have a little look, um, I which the my uh, other uh, of, of my uh, blogger blog. I have two blogs: a blogger blog and a WordPress blog. And the WordPress blog is kind of a backup blog, which I occasionally sh shift the blogger blog over to. And curiously, the uh, I find that the um, WordPress blog actually gets much more notice in the Google al algorithms which is where it's worth bearing in mind that you can sort of increase your profile by uh, doing that sort of thing. I saw a discussion the other day on Steam it though where I also have started blogging, um, same with Medium and all the rest of it, um, but um, anyway I digress. Rhinos, cunts and twats. Now rhinos are republicans in name only, uh, cunts are conservatives under narrow terms and twats are Tory wets against Teresa. Now, Edmund Burke and Olaf Palmer, you wouldn't usually expect to hear those two in the same sentence, um, but they belong much more in the same sentence than uh, Mrs. May, the, the last name in, in that sentence, uh, who is definitely not a conservative. Yes, I'll say that again. Mrs. May is not a conservative. Neither is Boris Johnson, and neither are 
all of the neoliberal ter uh, 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 Tories, as in fact neither are Tony Blair um, or uh, Ed Balls or Gordon Brown or Jack Straw, um, current members of the uh, Labour benches like um, I don't really remember their names so well Hillary Benn is a good one uh, they're basically neoliberals they're not socialists they're not even democratic socialists they are neoliberals and uh, albeit they may be neoliberals of the left and this is maybe maybe a neoliberal of the right but neoliberals are fascists and they're of that species of fascism known as Stalinism which you probably think is communism um, and Stalinism um, is neither communism or Marxism. It's uh, sui generis of itself. It uh, is a form of tyranny that grew up in the vacuum created uh, in the power structures of the former Tsarist Russia um, and in the space made way for by a Bolshevik revolution. And um, if you're not up on your political theory, and let's face it, why should you be? It's pretty boring stuff. Um, and uh, uh, But if you do sort of delve into it and read um, journalists who still engage their grey matter before engaging their quill, such as, shall we say, Peter Hitchens, who I really like, even though I am not a conservative, I have great respect for conservative views and why shouldn't I? I'm actually a philosophical anarchist so uh, I say a plague on all their houses really. I, 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 have, I follow the dictum of the famous writer Oscar Wilde and Oscar Wilde said that uh, rules are for the guidance of fools and the, uh, 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 the obedience of fools and the guidance of wise men and uh, who could argue with that? Certainly not me from my position. Um, so anyway, Edwin, Edmund Burke and, 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 and this blog that I did, uh, particularly this video, uh, why, I'm, why, I'm a, why I am a democratic socialist, social democracy versus, uh, what's the rest of that title here? Uh, if my connection will... Uh, um, I've lost my thread there. I don't believe in editing. I'm such a terrible old Dadaist. Um, anyway, so if I open there, so the conquest of Doe, epilogue in chapter one, and I sort of threw together this uh, book cover for it yesterday um, just to do a bit of tweeting, and I put that on a t-shirt on the T Mills um, website, which I maintain and uh, have never sold a single t-shirt through. I suspect that's something to do with my design skills but probably as much to do with the price tags that are $19 each which is huge. Uh, it's, 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 I mean they are organic and all the rest of it. Um, but anyway I digress. Let's get back to what else we've got of Conquest though. Cornucopia now, cornucopian ideas are um, ideas direct opposition to and ref reflections of uh, mirror images of opposite to uh, Malthusian views of scarcity. Um, and uh, the cornucopian view is really the Doe of Aleppo uh, hero. Um, and central character of the novel Abdul Hittiti or Hittite or Hittite, whatever, however one wishes to announce that, I'm not going to quibble. Um, it's a novel which I'm writing in the grey space and I'm trying to write it in such a way that the re readers bring their own interpretation to the characters um, and their own experience to the characters, which is a... Um, an idea which I started to develop in my poem, um, which uh, bourgeois resolution. Um, but 
again I digress, there's a video from the Hunger Games, and the Hunger Games, this is actually a cornucopian ho uh, horn, w which has all of the weapons in. Um, there's a question for Hunger Games, did a little bit of it yesterday, and it's really most unpleasant, most dystopian. We have this figure here, Cronus. Now, Cronus uh, entered our story. Um, he is found in Greek mythology and um, in Hesiod's uh, Theogony, uh, which is a, basically a poem about the genealogy of the gods. Um, and that in and of itself is, is quite interesting. Um, this will be developed, you know, in the book, this is kind of bumper stickered uh, rather, you know, rather more efficiently, uh, hopefully with some humour. Um, because in this book two years ago, there are a lot of things which take quite a lot of study. Um, you have to do, um, and then you find that narratives run parallel or in succession to prior um, narratives. Um, anyone that's watched the Zeitgeist movie, um, the first one, and the opening part talk, talking about the connections of Christianity to uh, prior Sumerian uh, theology, um, as uh, expressed through the, the cuneiform tablets, um, uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh, etc., will have some idea of what we're talking about here. Um, but uh, I happen to be a, a Christian, um, although I'm non denominational, and so I consider myself to be an Orthodox Jew, um, uh, as Jesus undoubtedly was, and as Muhammad, um, Prophet Muhammad, um, peace be upon him, uh, also was by my own personal relationship with um, the idea, the spirit of God, the word of God as, as, we, as we find it through various prophets, human people. Um, it's quite simple when, when you sit down and think about it and Conquest of Doe is really about this, it's about what is orthodoxy? What is conservatism? Uh, what is it that um, upsets the oligarchs, upsets the monarchs, upsets the nobilities, or the privileged in-groups, or what we call elites down the ages? Uh, and what tricks and narratives or stories or mythologies do they spin? Um, to keep the rest of us in order um, and what happens when they push it too far um, and what does history tell us about that all of these things run through the novel uh, The Conquest of Doe what else have we got here right now here we are um, now to the Hurrians to now this is absolutely essential to the idea of the Holy Leaven of the uh, Doe of Aleppo um, and uh, Kamabi uh, is found referred to um, in some tablets which were discovered, I think, in the 1930s. Um, but he is similar to, or seems to draw upon the same ideas as Cronus in Hesiod. Um, and uh, this is something which I'm a few chapters. Um, I've put up chapter five actually on in draft. And uh, but here we are, the song of Kamabi, and particularly the song of S silver, is very important to the history of money. And the conquest of Doe is also about the history of money um, and the history of agriculture. Um, and the cornucopian view, uh, as opposed to the scarcity, the rationing, the Malthusian view. Um, and uh, the Malthusian view 
would tend towards an idea of golden or gold uh, and the uh, cornucopian view to silver um, and the idea of complementary currencies. Now, that requires a framework to get how that fits in with grain, agriculture, early agriculture, the first sedentary societies. Um, and uh, I've introduced those themes in chapter four, Grains of Truth. Um, and uh, the road to Damascus uh, talks about the five um, species of fruits of Israel. Um, of course they predate Israel by a jolly long way. Uh, if I go through some of these other tabs you'll, 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 you'll get an idea of where I'm coming from and why I would say that. Um, uh, that's a book, I don't, The Song of the Silver Fond, I must read it. Um, it's a novel. Um, Lolita-esque, I must say, I think, you know, the, the, some of the themes in it seem to be. Uh, but looking for the Song of Silver, uh, that cropped up. And, and this. Now, what I did find was two academic papers. Um, this one here by Noga Ayali Darshan, um, which uh, the role of Astabi in the song of Ulkumi and the Eastern Mediterranean failed god stories. Uh, I also um, uh, another paper on this, uh, a much older uh, paper, um, which will come up in a minute. Uh, I'm in the middle of reading that one at the moment. This is a reference to it in Google Books, um, this, uh, which um, again is on my reading list at the moment. This was someone else looking for in a university site. These are all in German and they are uh, fragments and translations of said fragments, some of which will have been, uh, I'm sure, actually translated by this chap here, Hans Gustav Guterbock, uh, who um, wrote this uh, article, um, the Hittite version of the Hurrian Kamabi myths oriental forerunners of the Hesiod. Told you, there we are, there we have it. Um, and um, it's laden with comic, um, co co comic, comic promise in that it is about a son of a god uh, who um, corresponds to Cronus and his father Zeus, um, but in this case, the father and the son. The son, who is Kamabi, um, uh, here, well, here we go, it says here, the political texts under discussion centre around the Hurrian god Kamabi, who corresponds, as we shall see, to Kronos, apart from some fabrics which cannot yet be placed. There are two making compositions. Uh, the, the first may be called Theogony, uh, the Hittite title of the text unfortunately is broken away. The second uh, text is called Song of Ulikumi. In the colophon it consists of more than two, probably three tablets, which have come down in several copies. Um, it, it goes on and then it sort of develops the story, which to paraphrase is basically uh, the son, uh, with his mother's encouragement, baits, bites off the testicles of his father uh, and then spits out the semen which brings forth various monsters and enemies and all this sort of thing. Um, now, uh, that's just begging for I promise uh, uh, for an I promise not to come in your mouth, Jake, isn't it? But um, uh, <laughs> uh, the serious side of this is is that how it shows um, there are running deep in these stories. Um, that you find in, in, in Genesis, in the Pentateuch, in the Torah, uh, basically the first five books of the Bible. Jump a few few pages forward, um, and uh, is giving myself. I was given this book when I was about eight years old by my father. Uh, he used to go from Germany to England on business uh, for interview boards, or you know whatever business he had in Whitehall 
uh, and he would always bring us back presents. And one time he brought me back this book, which is Bible Stories by uh, David Kossoff. Um, and it's open here to the story of um, Isaac's sons. Um, but prior to that, it's talking about um, uh, Ishmael, uh, who was the son of Abraham's concubine, uh, who is the father of the Arab nation um, in biblical terms. Um, Ishmael is a prophet, a, 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 a prophet revered in Israel. Um, and it talks about this story. Um, why not? It gives how the uh, faith of Judaism part, uh, passes on the, met, met, uh, the, 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 the metri. And clearly that's because the firstborn son to Sarah, who was married to Abraham, uh, was Isaac. Uh, but of course the first son that Abraham had fathered uh, was by uh, Hagra, uh, who was, Hagar, who was um, the handmaiden of Sarah um, and became the concubine of Abraham at Sarah's suggestion. Um, then it gets, I mean, it gets better to the story in that then uh, Abraham's third wife, now there's, there's sort of a little bit sort of uh, interest in this one, uh, in that uh, Abraham's third wife isn't even mentioned uh, by uh, uh, David Kossoff in this wonderful, wonderful book. It's got beautiful illustrations. I, I, I remember those as much as the story. Um, but let me just get to well, um, mail. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. That's a uh, Islamic scholar. Now, here we go. Now, Ketula. Okay. Um, now, this is Abraham's third wife who also had um, issue progeny children with Abraham and this is how we get this the song of um, father Abraham had seven sons because obviously there was Isaac there was Ishmael but there were also the children that were born to Abraham to uh, Keturah and uh, this part of um, whether Keturah and Hager are actually one and the same person or not. Uh, we're not taking that view in the conquest of Doe. We're having them as separate people. Um, that's important because then that opens up all of the Book of Jubilees. Now, what if you have your history of the Catholic Church um, uh, from the founding of the Catholic Church through to the Council of Nicaea. Uh, so that's, say, the first four or five hundred years of uh, uh, what we call Christianity, uh, organised Christianity, call it what you like. But, but um, uh, that's when they decided what would go in and what wouldn't go in the, uh, in the, uh, in the Bible, or, you know, the, the official version of the Bible, which Constantine eventually signed off on. Not dissimilar to Max Mosley signing off on the racist, so-called, you know, this 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 pamphlet from the 1960s by-election that's got Tom Watson into so much trouble. Um, keep an eye out for Tom Watson in the um, Glastonbury scenes of uh, Conquest of Doe later in the book. Um, but uh, the Book of Jubilees is really, really important to the story of money uh, because one of the ideas of it is that there's a jubilee against debtors every 49 years. Now that's really important where usury is allowed um, uh, and that ties back into Aristotelian ideas of money and um, all, all of this stuff um, runs through the book uh, as related to uh, this holy Doe. Um, and uh, um, 
it is a ripping yarn um, of uh, great wit and wisdom, even if I say so myself. Um, should be a bit of fun. Uh, Diodorus of, of Tar, Russian naval base in Syria, which was recently bombed by the Americans. And, and um, uh, let's just look at that for a second. Um, uh, in that um, I describe in chapter five, which is called The Sky is Falling In, that um, uh, the character that I've just introduced, which bears not a passing resemblance to yours truly, uh, found snorting cocaine uh, in his hotel suite at the Four Seasons at Canary Wharf. Now, I would never have done anything like that, would I? Um, and uh, uh, actually, um, this character, who, who by complete coincidence has the same name as me, Roger, um, has a deal going with... Um, uh, a character in the book um, who happens to be the foreign secretary um, and uh, if the doe is captured uh, they, uh, the property Rog is able then to proceed with his marina development at Tarsus and uh, what's interesting about this as well is that um, they'd already uh, you know they'd missed out on the marina development um, half the Libyan show uh, in Tripoli, um, uh, or, 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 or got it anyway, but of course the Foreign Secretary said that um, there were lots of opportunities once the bodies were cleared out of the way, if you remember that episode from your contemporary newspapers, the ones that wrote about it, um, and uh, it mentions missing out on the deal on the Ukraine uh, show in that uh, what happened in Crimea meant that uh, uh, Rog and Bojo, the other character, or Bozo, whatever I've called him, um, uh, didn't get that deal. Um, obviously it was a big shame because their fathers had done a deal back in the day uh, in developing a marina at Split um, when, when that all kicked off. So uh, clearly w what I'm actually saying there is that um, uh, these wars have subtext, um, winners and losers, uh, the industrial military complex and all of that. So, but what's running through it is this idea of um, uh, orthodoxy, conservatism, um, real wealth founded in the land um, and agriculture. Um, and... Uh, you know, one of the sort of cliched memes that comes out is the sea prophecy about, you know, when they uh, kill all the buffalo and chop down all the trees and all the way find out they can't eat their money. It's that, that, that. I mean, it's a good prophecy, that one. It's, it's um, probably still less, le less well known than it should be. Uh, but anyhow, um, back to my YouTube channel, which was the original point of this, uh, was, was to actually say, well, I'm going to make videos explaining myself um, and the book itself is explained in terms of a framework for knowledge in the website uh, the conquest of doe novel multimedia website um, and it sort of breaks into it gently really um, the first page uh, um, Read this but read a little bit that comes out of that in a minute. Um, a will cut in, she's got to read that with uh, the decline and fall of practically every wish in the 50s. Um, apparently, um, President Eisenhower had a copy on his desk, it says in the uh, in the forward to the reprint. Lovely video, this is from the 1980s Women of America for the World. Um, uh, anyway, so it goes on the banking scene from um, Hollywood movie. There he is. There's, uh, the Venezuelan chappy, Chavez. Um, anyway, here's a timeline of history, um, and so it it will ease you into uh, these different characters fed into this. Does does go all the way back to uh, 
actually the settlement which is now underneath Lake Assad um, and uh, Al Harab or something and, 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 and it's one of the original settlements where agriculture developed from um, and it was excavated and what have you and um, uh, before they actually flooded uh, that part of the um, I think it's the T no no it's the Euphrates um, anyway it, it's it is really good you know this book I've got to tell you it's it's um, it's exciting to be writing it um, in that it's uh, as I say, it's, a, it, it, it's an experimental novel written in the grey space, and so um, I'm writing it and thinking out loud um, about we discover it together. That's the idea of the book. Um, and uh, in an early chapter, uh, Peyton Ch Saint Paul um, translator Saint Jerome, uh, who was probably ripping off. Cicero, who in turn was ripping off Horace, which is basically saying that um, uh, you should translate the sense of the sense and not weigh out the words um, with literal translations. Um, that's an idea that I found also in Leo Oppenheimer's introduction to his fantastic book which is linked to, or now which is called Letters from Mesopotamia. Um, so that's the introduction. Is then you've got Clue, uh, which is looking at the truth. So it's Hero Abdul as he escapes Aleppo via um, the road to Damascus uh, to Alexandria via Cairo, meeting along the way various characters from different parts of history that will explain the linkages into and importance of the idea of sour bread dough and the beauty of sour bread dough is that the yeast is naturally occurring in the atmosphere and if you want to make a sourdough uh, bread what you do is you take some lemon peel and you peel that into a jar with some water you let that s uh, stand and then you feed it with flour and that will start a starter dough and you feed it and grow it and then you end up with a starter dough from which whenever you want to bake a loaf of bread you get a bit of your starter dough you put it in your bowl with some water and some flour um, and it is a naturally leavening raising a bread and sour sourdough bread is really tasty it's got crusty uh, it's lovely with, with, with the nice sort of cheese um, yes. Yeah. And oh, I sort of feel I'm feeling hungry now. Anyhow, so uh, enjoy the website, as I say, um, and let's just go back to again. But um, statistics on this channel. I was looking at. I was quite surprised. Is um, if I look at the last twenty-eight days on this video, is going to be put. Um, you can see that uh, in the last month, uh, videos on this channel have been viewed three and a half thousand times. The average duration of the viewing has been one minute twenty-five. Um, now, uh, Trigger's new broom has made up a third of those, um, but the ones that surprised me were that this video here I made was the voiceover of um, Henry George's famous uh, Peace by Standing Army speech during the uh, railway strike of the coach builders. Um, and it's a really good speech, it was a great speech, um, but that, that was, that's been viewed 114 times this month, which, which I found quite surprising. This neoliberal graphic morph sequence, which is my take on what neoliberalism really is, uh, and then um, there are some of my guitar ones there. This is a, a lesson video I did for the guitar. Um, the comments teach you a lot about human nature, um, particularly Trigger's new broom. Um, uh, well, I've been referred to variously as a, a dirty hippie um, and worse. Um, 
fuck off and die you cunt I think I got for one um, so uh, thank you hater is a good one to watch but this is um, water off a duck's back for me um, anyway where are we um, that's the other thing you get a big dose of in this of healthy stoicism Epictetus is one of my favourite ever philosophers um, and uh, you know if I can control what I put up on the internet all the rest of it but what people make of it that really is their business it's, um, you know if they get something from it great if they don't well you know the internet's a bloody big place there's lots of stuff you better find something that floats your boat um, so yeah um, that's my demonetized uh, channel um, which which I've enjoyed doing over the years. It's been kind of a bit of a hug hobby. Um, I, it was interesting. I heard uh, Ian Schilling, Ian four five six seven eight or five six seven eight nine, uh, being uh, interviewed by Richie Allen. Nice interview. You should listen to it if you get a chance. Um, and he was saying, "Well, this is my hobby." Um, this is Ian now saying his hobby is following the news and making his tweets and maintaining his blog uh, and. You know, I'm I am similar to to Ian. I mean, um, my YouTube channel and learning to play the guitar was a hobby for many years, and my my blog um, was a kind of a cathartic exercise in sort of self uh, help, really. When I started writing that, when we moved here from uh, from from uh, my bubble England on the estate, um, and uh, so it's a, 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 you know, another kind of thing we've developed. And then for the last two years, um, writing this novel, Conquest of Doe, uh, during that period I've also written the three epic poems, which is the trilogy, trilogy which informs the ideas which inform the book from the viewpoint of the modern political economy um, and the book from a religious, uh, sociological and anthropological uh, point of view is dealing with the material uh, which I was just talking about um, and uh, there's a, a word uh, it's in the general lexicon the, 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 the word anathema now anathema is something that is ruled out ruled out of bounds something which is taboo out of the accepted canon out of the canonical uh, body of accepted scriptures that's anathema and something which is tainted with such taboo or cursed even uh, by the clerics by the pope whatever, is known as being anathematized and the people who write this type of material are considered heretics and this book is really a prayer to and a hymn for a celebration of and a joke about some of my favorite heretics who I mentioned earlier Nestorius um, Aria, Arius and dear old lovely Pelagius the Irish monk yes Pelagius oh, he was a thought to be uh, a monk uh, from Ireland but found himself all those miles away um, another one of my favourites who wasn't ever sort of considered heretical uh, unlike another one of my favourite philosophers who's Baruch uh, Spinoza uh, was um, Moses my Ammonides and uh, I've never been able to quite work out why 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 Maimonides got away with it and 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 uh, uh, did not. Go figure. Anyway, maybe an answer to that will be forthcoming in the pages of the Conquest of Doe as we go on. So, part of the uh, you know, the notes that I've put these couple of pages of notes earlier, but just to give you some idea. Uh, these are um, 
this one here, this is Congress of Doe, Roots and Roots, that, that's my notes on the roots and some of the jokes that go in to the uh, chapters along the way. Um, just to give you some idea, here we are, which is the beginning here. Um, <laughs> right, uh, th this is talking about bread dildos. Um, and uh, Leon describes another Roman custom that is sure to shock. She wrote that for centuries male and female cheaters in Athens and Rome could legally be killed if they were caught, en flagrante. However, there was another non-lethal humiliating punishment reserved for male cheaters. The cuckolded husband could legally sodomise the adulterer with an audience if desired, she wrote. Rather than human-to-human -human penetration, the punishment sometimes took symbolic form. The injured party could inflict his revenge by inserting a radish into his rival's bum. Now, if you've been paying attention recently, you will know that the Judas does people at their um, celebration of Passover <laughs> had, a, had a party uh, which uh, Jeremy Corbyn brought his homegrown radishes to. And I'm sure there are plenty of people that, 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 that would deserve um, or be deserving of a revenge from the sainted Jeremy Corbyn with, with his radishes. I think they were beetroots though, so that was sort of uh, slightly, slightly different. But um, anyway, how many, let's just have a quick look at that. That, that. That's one of my recent books of notes on this. Uh, let's just do a... Uh, where are we? Let's just... Here we are. Look, Syrian timeline, that was that one. Character de development timeline, Syrian timeline, and hurry and Egyptian stuff. Uh, it's that one. Let's have a look at that one. I've got too much over on this computer. It's a very powerful computer, but you can have way too much open even with a machine of this Kaliber. Uh, in fact this program is called Kaliber. Anyway, um, look, I'm gonna just knock it off there um, and uh, do please um, do please take the opportunity of enjoying the website and having a, uh, a scurry around. The books of notes for the book the novel when it's finished. I, I am actually going to make them available on the web. Um, I think at the last count there's something words as research notes. Um, I read very quickly and I've been reading solidly for two years on all of this. I also have a regional memory so um, uh, which is quite helpful really coupled with the internet and being able to reference and uh, tag things you can navigate between lines um, and the idea of making a multimedia novel is that um, uh, certainly in the um, it's possible to link in uh, find lots of videos embedded in the website you'll find lots of PDFs and, and full-on books embedded in the website as well uh, but the EPUB novel itself the footnotes. Um, it's the beauty of them, you see, you can link the footnotes to Wikipedia or um, uh, wherever. There's a, a hard copy, the uh, Project Guggenheim, uh, or the web archive, uh, the web archive, uh, which I was just a little while ago in this video talking about David Coxoff's Bible stories. So anyway, enjoy.